Awake now? I'm awake. I'm awake <laughs> as soon as I thought there was an earthquake going on. All right, I just worked uh, oh, nine summit to summit stations. Roger, you're five and six, five and six, like Sam, Arizona. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Two. We're at the SoCal Soda Fest. Uh, some people have already headed out. Uh, Adam's head up to Gold Mountain. We're going to go up there. Tim and I are going to go up there as well. You got these guys airing down the Jeep here. What you doing? Aaron down the Jeep. Aaron is down. Getting ready to get out there and hit it hard, eh? Well, let me tell you John Burke trail. We'll see how far we get. And your call sign? Kilo X-ray 6 India. All right. And we got? Whiskey 9, Sierra Sierra November. Whiskey 9, Sierra Sierra November. Gus in here. These guys are going to head up to where are you going? Arctic. Arctic. All right. That should be a fun adventure. Well, hopefully in this bad boy. Yeah. Yeah, all right. We got uh, Mike over here in the white vehicle. I don't know where they're headed out this morning. Delamar, I believe. So, uh, got a few people out this morning. Where are you heading out? Uh, still trying to decide. Maybe we'll head to the strip mine or maybe we'll head out to gold. One of the two first. Okay. Sure. Sounds good. Get some coffee. And are you going to go where he goes? Yeah, yeah. We're going to go with the little <laughs> pair, I think. Yeah, awesome. We're going to hike in pairs. We, we may try to set up a two meter Yagi with a power amp and see how far out we can reach. Ah, that'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. And your call signs? KG6MWQ. All right. AE6NH. All right. <laughs> getting out here, getting the soda done. Cool. Yeah. And you're live with the hand ninja. Uh. <laughs> call sign, young man. K6TW. And why are you catching me like five <laughs> minutes after I woke up? Because this, this, is, this is real life, man. All right. This is this is high speed, low un, drag un, here. Unfiltered soda. <laughs> <laughs> let's get cracking. All right. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> That's Tim. We're gonna go up to uh, Gold. Then we may head over to Bertha. It's a plan. So I'm ready to roll. Call sign and serial number. KN6EZE. All right. That's Mike. He uh, leads the uh, Zoom sessions every couple of weeks uh, for the SoCal Soda team. Yeah. So thanks, Mike. Where are you guys heading today? We are probably going to Delamar and Bertha. Okay. Um, but uh, great to see everybody in person here. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So awesome. we'll see. We'll see what we can get done today. But uh, looking forward to spending time with everybody this evening. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right. Who we got over here? Orion. Oh, Orion. What's your call sign? KN6GOG. All right, KN6GOG. All right, hamninja.com, right here. And one CLC. Glad to meet you. Thank so you, you guys are, you're gonna head up, rock a little bit of CW this morning? Uh, maybe not. I barely got any sleep. Oh come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. All right. And who we got over here? Um, KN6GOG. KN6GOG, N1CLC, no. glad to meet you. Likewise. Oh, GOH. <laughs> yeah. Don't get, don't get them mixed up. <laughs> you, if you want to log those points. Right after him. All right, so you guys are all hanging together on a few peaks today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So. Awesome. All right. And your your name? Linda. Linda. All right, cool. All right, so they're, they're all heading out as a group. And uh, as soon as Tim wakes up over here, then we're going to head out as well. Are you awake now? I'm awake. I'm awake <laughs> as soon as I thought there was an earthquake going on. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd wake him up by rocking his vehicle back and forth. <laughs> I get the adrenaline going. All right, we're going to head out in uh, Tim's uh, Tacoma here. Up the west side of the mountain here. And uh, you can hear some guys on summits already. Get up there and grab a few summit to summits. Set us some HF, see what we can do. All right, I uh, just want to show you my setup here before we get started. Um, I'm running with the big pole just because I'm, I got kind of a heavy dipole. It's a link dipole, 20 meter, 40 meter uh, dipole up here. Looks like a nice view, possibly over Victorville and up into Upper Valley and stuff. 
that direction. Um, I'm going to try the QCX Mini out again. Um, this thing worked great last time, except I was getting some RF possibly back into the radio. So this is why I'm setting up the 20 meter dipole is um, I should get less RF back into it. And I'm going to test the um, AMR paddles um, that I tried last time that didn't work um, because of some issues. I'm not sure what it is. And if those don't work, I have some backup. These little uh, tiny guys. Uh, I'll put the link in the description what these guys are. They're really cute little paddles. Super well made. I love these things. Great feel to them. Magnetic returns on them. And then I have um, the one I stole from from uh, AA70Y. Thanks, Dale. Actually, I left them in the pack forgot to give them back to them. So I know those work. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, just some more testing with the QCX Mini. And then see how I can do this morning. We're up. We got, kind of got started a little bit late. It's um, 9 o'clock now. Uh, and it's definitely starting to warm up. So let's get on the air and see what we can do. settles this. We're going to head over to Del Mar and uh, we got several summit to summits, over 20 contacts and uh, so we're just going to crank right over there. Should, not that far. And uh, activate another one. Tim and I are heading up uh, Del Mar and uh, it's going to be steep about a 500 foot climb, maybe, I don't know what you think, half mile, Tim? Uh, yeah. So, definitely a different country over here. Got out of the, the scrub chaparral up into the pines. Nice breeze blowing. Pretty steep, huh, Tim? Pretty steep. Yeah, that's a real bear. Tim just spotted some wildlife there. I don't see it anymore. It was it's, uh, some sort of salamander or something with a neon blue tail. Cool. Never seen anything like that. I bet you can get a picture. All right. I just worked uh, well, nine Summit to Summit stations. So, fully activated just on that. Have a good trip down, man. We'll see you at camp. Right. Best. I worked uh, Josh and Daryl and uh, some other guys, Summit to Summit. So uh, very cool. There's been a bunch of guys coming up on um, from the group, <clears throat> coming through, hitting Del Mar, Del Mar Peak. And uh, so yeah, I'm taking down my station. I've got my uh, pole basically strapped to the tree, so that gives me an extra couple feet yeah, of elevation. So. Uh, I'm going to take that down. We're going to go down and check out uh, Ben's station as well. He's down here. I think I hear him down there. So, Oh, there he is. He's over in the trees. He's got himself in a nice, uh, a nice uh, shady spot there. So let's get this taken care of. Hi, right, your call sign? AG6N. AG6 November. Oh, hey. And you're running a uh, 817? Awesome. This is an 817. The workhorse of soda. Yeah, it does everything, so I like it quite a bit. <laughs> I do too. I love mine. Yeah, I, it, you know, if it doesn't work with that, I don't know if it would work with more power, so. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. And then what's your antenna setup? Uh, over there, I have a vertical. It's okay. It's a QRP guys kit, so it's a base loaded. Um, on 20 meters, it's resonant. On 40 meters, there's a coil. And then on, uh, on 10 meters, I'm sorry, 30 meters, there's a coil as well. Okay, so this is his uh, vertical wire coming off. Uh, a oh, pole, a little push-up pole, a little bit bigger than than my Chinese one here. That's a Chinese pole too. Oh, is it Chinese? Yeah. Twenty bucks, Amazon. Oh, there you go. Okay, it may be the same one as this one then. Maybe I've had to make some parts for it on my lathe. The, <coughs> uh, the end caps fell off, so ah, uh, yeah. Galvanize and make some new parts <laughs> so it doesn't just explode and fall apart. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then you got your uh, Yaesu F2 yeah, D. This is a FT2D. It's not a very good soda radio at all. No? Uh, it's, it's deaf and it's easily overloaded, but I use it for putting spots out if I don't have phone internet. Right, the APRS so is that, really nice. That works most of the time Okay. when, when phones don't work. So I, right. it hasn't really let me down, but as far as like weak signal stuff or, or trying to get around like interference of towers, it just it, it doesn't really work very well at all. I'm sure maybe putting a bandpass filter in here would help, but I just... Bandpass filter would probably be definitely in order. Um, I found that a friend of mine has the F2 III, and man, I was getting all kinds of stuff that he couldn't hear at all on his F2, on his FT3. I was getting it on my Yaze, on my uh, Anytone. Really? 8, 878, yeah. It's a, you know, it's, they decided to put their money into something else rather than worrying about bandpass and, and filtering, so. Hmm. And you're running the AMR key down here, I see. Yeah, I just got this. I really like it. I, yeah. I uh, haven't figured out how to hold it yet. And I, okay. sometimes if I have a sweaty hand, I, it doesn't really work. And it's, it's odd. I've, but I, I do like it a lot. It fits in my bag perfectly. Uh, it seems pretty much bulletproof. I don't know if I can break it. Um, but I, I do like it. My, other, my only problem that I've had with it, and this is totally because of my adjustments, was I had the keys too tight. And so when I'd send a dit, it would it would kinetic energy like send a da and i couldn't figure that out for the longest time i was like what's going on so i just had to back off the adjustments on it and it worked fine okay uh so yeah very cool whoever suffers through my cw qso is like thank you yeah well hey they gotta suffer through all of us man so yeah very cool yeah um all right well i'm gonna head uh tim already headed down he's hungry so okay he, he went down to the truck to get some get some food i'm packing up right now myself all right so. great I'm gonna get out of here. Cause I'm like, left doesn't look familiar, right doesn't look familiar. Okay. So I'm like, I'll go to the road. I thought we were further down there. Yeah, I would have freaked if you weren't here and I was like, what the hell? I was trying to call you on the radio. Got a man down, man down. Yeah, I was trying to call you on the radio. Bummer. Where's the peak? Love this trail. It's a roadhead. Um, it's crow, it's closed, so we're gonna walk from here. Tango, Tango, thanks for the contact. Really appreciate it. Have a great day and a great rest of the weekend, 73. This is KN6EZE and KN6DOG. KN6EZE and uh, his son and his wife, all uh, soda operators, up on the summit in front of us. Uh, summit to summit, summit so to summit. Uh, we're going to see those guys in just a few minutes. Hopefully, as we head up the hill here. So, um, should be a quick hike. And uh, yeah, there's a, a, a bike. I wouldn't call it, I don't know if it's a race or not, but. Uh, whole bunch of bikes we've seen going around the mountains here. Um, some were going this way, some were going over around Del over Delamar, and then probably back into town. So a lot of people out today enjoying the uh, the nice weather. It's about 80 degrees up here right now. It's beautiful in the shade. It's beautiful in the shade. So, so how'd you do? Pretty good. Still going crazy out there with the summit summits. Awesome, K6 EZE -E here. So we still have a few, uh, we can still make a few, huh? Oh, totally. Awesome. There's still a guy up on Gorgonia right over there, so. All right, cool. Yeah. Heard a guy in Onyx. Yep. He might still be there. Yeah, he is, definitely. We just got him. So you, awesome. You won't miss the action. Cool. Well, this will be number three for us. Nice. So, and then he wants to do four and five, so we'll see. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds All right. good. Good luck, guys. We'll see you guys. All right. Even though it is hot, we got a fantastic view here at Big Bear Lake. Um, and the ski area behind, up over there. Guys down there water skiing and sailing and having a great time. We decided to hike in 80 degree weather, but. And a lot of boaters out there. That's a lot of boats. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to be out there with them. Uh -uh. There's not much room. That'd be a little crazy. Especially you're skiing or something. Bertha, uh, I left the, the uh, drone back at the camp, so no drone vid today. <clears throat> Big number three. That's pretty steep. Climb up here and felt like 80 plus, but. Ah, nice in the shade of the wind blowing. The view of the lake gets even better from up here. You see the two marinas down there. And people down there having a good time and then during their weekend. 
Tim, give us a trail report. What do you think? It's hot. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's kind of steep. It's uh, kind of steep, hot, very sunny and exposed, over 80 degrees. Uh, not a whole heck of a lot of fun, but we're up here now and there's an amazing breeze coming through. Best we've had all day. Uh, so. Yeah. That makes me happy. I'm happy. It's a beautiful breeze. As they say, it doesn't have to be fun to be fun. Yeah, George is really strong today. Tracking before Tim leaves me, but uh, 1.4 miles each way, so that gave us close to three miles hiking. Easy going up the road, but it was hot. Yeah, it's a bit steep. Rocky, of course, it's SoCal. But uh, yeah, uh, 17 contacts and I don't know, around eight summit to summits. So yeah, good times. So we're gonna head back. Hopefully that beer is still cold. And uh, we'll do another one tomorrow. Thanks for watching. The soda fest can be complete without, you know, the dinner scene, which I <laughs> forgot to do. So, uh, what's Laureen eating for dinner? I'm cleaning the dishes. Oh, you're cleaning the dishes, <laughs> but you already ate uh, beans. Course one. <laughs> course one, which was beans and something, right? Yeah. All right. Turkey chili and, and chips, basically. Oh, well, that sounded good. All right, Gus. I'm eating uh, Charlie's Molten Center Oreos. Yeah. <laughs> is that your dinner? Uh, I think it will be. Okay. This is my dessert. Well, Charlie and I are eating some of uh, Gus's uh, MREs here. Uh, I got, Cold weather stuff. I got the uh, spaghetti with meatballs. Spaghetti with meatballs. I'm having the beef strogi. Um, if I'm able to finish this video tomorrow, then you'll know it's okay. <laughs> it's only three years old. It's only three years old. <laughs> Not a problem. Basically, Mountain House looks just like Mountain House stuff. It's so. exactly Mountain House. It's labeled, I think, on the front. Oh, really? Yeah, Mountain House. So, so, if it was government property, but they were throwing it out. So, Gus said, hey, who would eat old food? Oh, these soda guys. They'll eat anything. <laughs> yeah. And we got some people up there uh, practicing bow and arrow. And, uh, yeah, I've got a good crew going on today. Everybody's tired from uh, doing summits and in the heat. Yeah, good times had by all. We got one more day of soda tomorrow That's right. on the way out. You're gonna grab something, I'm gonna grab something. I may grab two summits on the way out, we'll see. I may hike up to gold or drive my bike up to gold. No time for me, That's just one is all I can do. Yeah, you gotta jet to Phoenix. Six hour drive ahead. Yeah, you gotta get back to the cool weather, right, Charlie? Oh, gosh, don't even, don't even tell me. <laughs> all right, oh, by the way, that is, really is the famous NJ7V. We are in his presence. He's allowed us to sit at his table. I'm extremely I'm you know, gracious proud of that. I'm gracious to let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Red Summit RF, go check out his YouTube video. Big Gus comes along, uh, pushes the mast over, pulls out one of the stakes. It, we're about five feet from the edge of the pit mine. Oh no. The mast is going over. Over the pit mine? <laughs> with the Yagi into the oh, mine. No. Lorene grabs the pole. Um, <clears throat> the Yagi is totally undamaged because when it hit, it was just out in free space hanging over the edge. Wow. <laughs> so, That's so we managed to avoid losing the Yagi uh, yeah. down 300 feet into the pit. Wow. That's uh, funny. <laughs> Question for the group here at the table Would you guys do this again? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We were just talking. Yeah, it's been cool. What would you change? Uh, the bike uh, race, eliminate that. <clears throat> no no dogs gonna... that would wake you up in the middle of the night. Jeff okay, he no dogs. John <laughs> <laughs> what about, I'm thinking like to be a little bit cooler in October. That would be nice too. Oh, mm. uh, we were talking about doing a winter one. But then it wouldn't be with the uh, other, with the 14er True. and stuff. True. It was kind of cool to have like the whole. I mean, but you know, I didn't get yeah. many of those guys. You didn't? Uh-uh. I did. I got, I got uh, George, and that was about it. I think from yeah, the group. Really? Yeah. I got huh. George. I got N0DET. I think. Yeah. He's in Colorado. 
You didn't get uh, Josh and uh, JD? I got Josh. I did. I didn't get Daryl. I mean, I got Daryl. Yeah. If you get Josh, you always get Daryl. Well, Come on. Josh chased me. Oh. On he, 40. Yeah, but they always hand it over if they chase someone to summit. Maybe. All right. You're in trouble. <laughs> maybe maybe you I QSY. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that. It's like, oh man, I missed Daryl. And Daryl's like, what the heck? You shouldn't let Josh go first. That's the problem. Mm. All right. Any other comments? No, I think I'm doing the most really things. It's really wonderful to meet everybody here. Yeah. I mean, it's a, kind of an impressive group of people. It's just really yeah. Feel, uh, it's definitely to, fun. To meet guys. Some guys left earlier today. Javi and Ben, I know, left. Yeah. But I saw Ben up at the... Adam must be over there. Somewhere. Got a beer, yeah. What we got here? Got the K. This is a K2. Serial number 1136. So an early, awesome. earlier generation Rev A and then re later upgraded. Um, this is a DSW2 for 20 meters. It's a, one of the early uh, digitally synthesized VFO uh, kits for uh, QRP radios. Okay. And this is a nano VNA, vector network analyzer for yeah. measuring antennas. Those and things are awesome. Other things, yeah, really useful. Yeah, yeah but neither be one out here. What's that? I knew there'd be one VNA yeah. out here, Nano VNA. What'd you bring, Lorraine? Lorraine? Uh, my handheld and uh, power amp. There you go. And, uh, power doggy. amp. How much amp did you bring? And How much power? Uh, J pole, uh, 35 watts. Oh, cool. Cool. All right. From Arctic Point, but only 5 watts. You should bring it out. I haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. This is a case. Did you put your stuff over there? Oh no. There we are. Oh cool. My my first of two KX1s that I own. This is the four band without an ATU. Unfortunately it didn't get used today because I left my pole for my dipole in my tent. Um, so I made do with the KX2 today on the summit, but this is a great little uh, portable radio, great receiver. Can do uh you can listen on sideband so you can do cross mode as well. Cool. Those are great. And uh, even comes with a little lamp, nice. which if I had batteries on, it's about on, the I could size do. of a mountain topper. I think it's a little bigger. Maybe one of the newer the four-band mountain toppers, probably okay. similar size. So, right. but cool. uh, pretty awesome little rig. Yeah. All right, Charlie. I'll let you unpack it there. Yeah. Let's see what the. Oh, uh, that's legit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> What do you got there? Not much to oh, it. Man, oh, look awesome. at that. <laughs> what do you got, Adam? That's just a random wire. 9 to 1. But you got the, like, wire. micro yeah, wire. Yeah, micro cool. wire. How'd it work today? It was good. I got John in New Zealand. I got, well, you know, Christian in France through an SDR. Um, um, but it worked. And how many contacts you get today total? 105. Yeah, 105, really and you got 50 what, con uh, summit to summit? 54. 54 summit to summit. Oh, yeah. So Adam sat up on Bertha. And no, I was on gold. Oh, you're on gold. I'm yeah. sorry. You're on gold, kicking back, rolling in the contacts. Yep. That's awesome. And I made, <clears throat> I, I brought uh, 60 dB of attenuation that I could put in line with this. And I made a three and a half mile summit to summit with Charlie, uh, Red Summit RF, with one microwatt <laughs> on 1 1.2 gigahertz. So that was Sweet. that was pretty cool. You Where'd you get the antenna? What was the signal? Uh, AliExpress, oh, was eight dollar Chinese special <laughs> log periodic. That's 1.2 gigahertz. 1.2 through about six gig, I think, is what this antenna can handle. So, That's awesome. Yeah, and it it works. Very cool. All right, how'd you do today? Oh. <laughs> we did. We went climbing instead. So we would actually. <laughs> what? But we will. I know. I know. Yeah. Dude. Oh, I, I chased. I chased though. So that was that counts, right? Yeah, yeah that counts. No, I'm cutting it out of the video. That's <laughs> yeah. that is so freaking lame. <laughs> I can't deal. Yeah, not worthy. I lost the cover. I got to order the the plastic cover. Anyway. <laughs> you know the cover that goes over the top. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Cra the crash cover, basically. Yep, I got gotcha. you. Um, I brought the KX2. Mm -hmm. uh, backup porta paddles. I don't know, have you tried these, Adam? 
Yeah, yeah I, I would adjust it with, there's too much play for me. I like it when they like don't move I need to go okay. and are really light and sensitive. So I had to turn um, it up a little bit because if you bash them a little bit too hard, it snaps the other one in. It feels pretty good. I like it. I like it better than this. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's just small to hold on to. I got to figure out a leg strap for it because you know sure. me. Yep. How oh, I love the strap on. <laughs> well, yeah. That's I guess I'm going to have to cut that out too. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I tried this out this morning. This is my QCX Mini. Yeah, a lot of editing. Um, this is a lot of fun. I hooked this up to my dipole. Um, I had a 2040 link dipole. So this worked really well on 20 meters. So I got a few contacts on that. And uh, I like these headphones because they just they reel up. So those are pretty cool. And I got the K6 ARK random wire and fed. This thing worked awesome. Um, worked that later on. And uh, then I got my AMR paddles here that I strap onto my leg. Um, I really like these. They just I like to play on them. Probably a little bit too much play for, for Adam, but yeah, they work well. Did you uh, run your U-Kits? That's uh, that's my U-Kits over there. I did ah. not run that today. I ran the, the JQG90. Which... Okay, did you build that, Mike? No, it actually comes uh, pre-assembled, but I did build the case for this, which is 3D okay. printed. So oh, just to sweet. protect these knobs, it just kind of snaps in and okay. does a pretty good job. It's cool. Awesome, like yeah. It. Definitely. All right. We got N7 JV. NJ7V? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of right, I'll edit that out. NJ7V, how's it going? What'd you bring? Well, I, my standard setup here, this is my old antenna, it's big, but it's, it's I've used this for a long time. I keep repairing it. Uh, what in 20, God's name is that? It's a 20, 30, 40, 60 meter dipole. Uh, Holy macro. So that's one of the reasons it's so big, it's got 60, it's a 60 meter. Yeah. But also it's got a bigger gauge wire because I mean, I, it was my first attempt. Because why not? Yeah. All right. Um, this is my normal setup here. I usually uh, use a, an inline recorder and uh, use earbuds from the recorder and then... All right, so as you were saying, we've we've got all that. Then you brought a HT 1.2 gigahertz. Yeah, 1.2 gigahertz. It actually has a... Uh, uh, two meter, two meter 70, and 70 centimeters on it as well. Okay. <clears throat> this is the antenna for the 1.2 gigahertz. I don't know, it's an eBay special, I guess. <laughs> How'd it work? Uh, well, Adam? Adam? Well, it worked for the one microwatt contact across three and a half miles, so. Yeah. So you were running one microwatt in and out because you one, had the... One one thousandth of a watt, and I had 60 dB of attenuation on receive. Awesome. So. And I have worked uh, with this. I've, I think my longest contact is over 100 miles, close, That's approaching awesome. maybe 150, uh, from a summit to Phoenix uh, with uh, 1.2 gigs. I'll have to look for sure, but it's, it was pretty long. That's really cool. That was totally awesome. Uh, I forgot to show that there's one radio. Washing. This reminds me of like, if Barbie did soda, this is what she would, this was what <laughs> would come in the past, right? <laughs> It's the Barbie radio. It's totally cool. It's small and it works awesome. Nothing you can't work with that. Cool. All right. Well. Oh, that's right. Barbies would be pink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ken's would, of course, he would have the black one. All right. Yes. And I guess the other thing, um, my backup paddles from K6 ARK. Quite apropos, right? given that I, I love one. wine, and yeah, uh, voila, they're super lightweight. With, like, no but uh, yeah. they're in sick bay right I now. They need a small just, repair. Out of the box. So. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. There you go. There's it's all the fun stuff the guy's been people bringing people up to the summit. You got something else there, Mike? Yeah, just the G90. Oh, let's check it out. It's more 3D printed stuff. And that's what you use it today? This is what I use today is 20 watts, but these rails, spending so much time in my pack, bent up the the stock ones so i just 3d print these okay and i can snap these off and break them in the pack and just print a new one for 10 cents sweet and just put them back right back on so you run sideband with that today yeah sideband and cw sweet yeah. the cable that and you got a mic with it, it yep if I need to yeah. out, so I yeah. what antenna were you using today i was using a uh, linked 40 30 20 oh, I just, and fit halfway well, oh yeah 
Yeah. Linked though. All right. Yeah. Linked because this guy puts out 20 watts. Yeah. And yeah. I just haven't found it, it doesn't, uh, a uh, a trap design I, I, that can it doesn't, handle uh, that much power coming out. Okay. So um, the link works the, just just fine on those. It switches the paddle. Very cool. It's, yeah. That's not like All right. a standard paddle. So these, it's a these big old mesh box. And you guys are going to go out tomorrow. We're hoping to, yeah. All right. What's your call sign? Uh, KN6 COU. KN6 COU. Call sign? Um, I think I'm X Y. <laughs> that is my call sign. All right. Well, to date. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll change that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you hooked up. You need to get up. it soon. Yep. Yeah. 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 You get it memorizing. Cool. Tests, right. right? Cool. Cool. And we had so, Mike's family up here. Uh, Someone's up here running CW. Yeah, we got you at Carl Strauss a few weeks back, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, up yeah. There, yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That was a good group. Sure, I have short term and long term memory loss. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly becoming a real problem. <laughs> so, yeah, let's do cool. some contacts tomorrow. Yeah, all right, cool. Summit to Summit. All right, now I've got to pack up all this stuff and let's charge my batteries. <laughs> it's packed. So we got IC705 705 from ICOM. hooked up to uh, vertical with radials. Oh. Sweet. Let's see who he's calling from. What's the tuner? M-Tech. Yeah. Did you build it? Uh, I, I bought it um, assembled. Okay. You can get them as a kit. Gotcha. Sweet little radio. It's pretty, that's for darn sure. It's the Apex Predator. A portable radio. Except for why, why it's a little it's too big, though. That's, that's my complaint. You put that in your backpack. <laughs> what kills me is no APRS. No APRS? No, my HT does APRS. I'm right. just you know what? You what know kills what, me is there's no tuner. You know what would have sold me on it? Not the tuner. Forget about the tuner. What would have sold me on that is if it was full duplex for satellites. Why for is it only split and not duplex? Right. Again, my HT, APRS, and full yep. duplex. That that would have I probably I I would probably have one if it was full full duplex for linear sats. I'll, be, I'll tell you, I, I assumed it was. Yeah. I know you, I, you know you can still set the split to work. Yeah, the satellite, yeah. it's not the same thing. Yeah. I mean, just... yeah. So right. close, Icom. So close. <laughs> cool setup. You got your paddles right down here. I like the way you're mounted there. Uh, I forgot. You know, this is a magnetic clip, and my, my clip fell off. But usually, smack, you just slap that on there. Uh, yeah, I use magnets <laughs> so, on too. Yeah, so that's that's Maybe. you know that's not there, and then a lot of Velcro and everything just sits and snaps, and that's cool. I need to build a little shelf. That's going to be my finishing finishing move. We'll be have a little shelf, and then and good. All right. But this is how this is how the newbie comp compensates for lack of skill. <laughs> is you throw a lot of equipment at it, and then you, now that I you know. And it's it's also an educator when you see it, you know what's going on. Yeah. So now I can trend this this will all happen in my head once I get to the uh, the minis. I'm at camp. Cheers. People trying to wake up. That's right, most important. A little bit of soda hangover. This is what the soda hangover feels like. <laughs> Just makes you want to do awesome. more. Okay, so um, Brian and I are gonna do a cycle up to um, gold mountain. Um, this is Brian's bike. He's got the battery in one wheel and then um, the motor in the other one. I'm guessing the motor's in the back. Just like it says a thousand watts. So it's a little bit different configuration than mine. I got what's I think referred to as a mid drive. Uh, basically just replaced the bottom bracket with a motor. So um, Brian was not happy with this just because of the really funky weight uh, issues that he has with the you know battery and, and uh, motor in there really hard to to steer I think they're um, I don't know we'll see uh, what he says when we get going here so Brian I'm W6 BFT uh, yeah and I'm interested to see the difference because you don't have full suspension do you 
No, uh, this is. I have a rock shock back here. Oh, on the okay, I'm, yeah. Not a rock shock, but a thud buster. So. Well, then we are. We should be evenly matched. This is going to be a great bike to bike comparison. All right, cool. For sure. Yeah, and you rode this one. Did you ride this one? Yet? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. And I loved how free it is to turn the wheels because again, mine, my weight's in my wheels. A lot of Yours mass up the there. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna leave the bikes here. It's just every time there's hope for something that I can ride, then there's like giant rocks and stuff. So if I if I hit one and stop, then I can't get started. I mean, I can, but I'm just popping wheelies with the electric motor. So we're gonna walk the rest away from here. It's about a mile, less than a mile. On my calc's trail report. This chunky stuff is miserable to bike on. I'm glad we're walking. Yeah. Even though I mean, it's not uphill, this is just, you're, you're exerting more work pushing those heavy bikes on the rock. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so how long have you been doing ham radio? Could you come over here? Yeah, I got my uh, general in, I want to say October last year. Okay. Wow. And then while the knowledge was fresh and pandemic had us inside, I uh, moved on to I would protect the general to uh, extra. Oh, sweet. When did you start soda? Within about a month afterwards. Okay. Look, I got radio because I was, it wasn't just me going back country. It was me and the dogs and the girl. And I didn't, it wasn't too much in the satellite phones. Just because the expense and, and the radios looked like a lot of fun. And had some great safety measures to them. So once I got into that, I found the soda community, and then I was off to the races. I was hooked. Yeah, it's it's addicting, isn't it? You know, I'm such a destination-driven hiker. Yeah. And that soda pings those endorphins of destination. You know, you want to get to that waterfall, you want to get to whatever. Yep. All of a sudden, you have all these magical destinations. You know that you want to get to. It's just. And when you the get there, experience. there's something to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the bonus because it's a shared experience at the summit. Especially as you're catching guys you've talked to before and John LDQ and Torrance. That guy's always... I send him pictures of my summits. Oh, like, great. Yeah. It's a lot of fun that way. Um, and you're doing sideband right now? Single side band and CW. Oh, you got CW too? Yeah. Crime any sakes. I'm just clearing. I mean, you just did it all. <laughs> Dude. I'm clearing my uh, my CW uh, 100 QSO mark. Awesome. Pretty excited about that. Dude, you just checked all the boxes for soda. You know, CW kicked me. I kicked that into gear when I had a almost failed summit. And I was like, oh. I cannot count on two meter and single side band. Okay. For the summits I want to go to. So, you know, all I needed to hear was CW as a guaranteed contact. And that drove me to, because, you know, I want to do summits in the Sierras where you're just not getting that two meter action. Right. You're not going to get two meter. Um, I think the other great thing is. If you don't have satellite, you may not be able to spot. Yeah. But if you create an alert and you're doing CW, uh, RBN Hole will spot for you when this, it sees you. The support system that's out there is mind blowing. The infrastructure. Yeah. Somebody built APRS. Somebody built RBN Hole. I emailed the guy who runs Soatless. Just like, he was throwing it right back. Oh, you're welcome. Like, these are just guys that are into it and build all these platforms. Yeah, RBM gate. Yeah. Or uh, APRS gate. Yeah. Yeah. I can send a text just to let, you know, someone at home know, hey, I'm a little slow, I'm a little behind. 
don't worry about me or it's as simple as uh you know a little late for dinner yeah it's nice i carry satellite messenger cannot beat that yeah so i'm covered well cool yeah i'll, I'll say this you know there's no comparison safety wise Satellite, you don't have to get to a peak. You're in the valley. Right. You can still get that message out. The radio is not lost on me. Had I had an injury where I couldn't reposition myself. Well, and the other thing is, you program up the repeaters for your area of operation. And you're pretty much, you're gold. I mean, I've gotten into repeaters out of a a valley that I shouldn't have been able to get into. What but area? Up in Arizona. I'd like to I'd like to see the repeaters mapped out. I'm not as convinced that's as true in the Sierras. Right, but right. I don't know. Because uh, repeaters take over too much brain power for me with all the you know, offsets and everything else. Yeah. Cool. What kind of rig do you run, now, Brian? 705. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you had that out last night. Yeah. Beautiful little unit. Great for beginners because it takes a lot of mystery out of what you can't see. Right. So that's it. And well, uh, looking forward to graduating onto the ones without all the screens. It'll be lighter weight because I lug that thing up here to work 20 meter CW. And that's it. A lot of my activations are just 20 meter CW. Gotcha. Meanwhile, <laughs> I brought this, you know, I brought an RV where I just used a tent. Right. So. Right. Well, you know, in soda, there is no right answer. In, in ham radio, there's no right answer. Any antenna, any radio you want to bring up here, it doesn't have to be QRP. Um, I've run QRO with a 991. Guys give me a hard time. That's not real ham radio. It's like, well, it is to me, especially as a beginner. It's running sideband. But uh, yeah, it's fun. I'll what kind of antenna you run? Um, mine is a vertical with six radials. So it's basically. Oh, what you had set up last night? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like That's a know, what you said about that no radio is a wrong radio. I've never heard anyone. We got a deer. Oh, yeah. Little deer and little mule deer. Probably won't be able to see her. She's on the other side of the tree now. Uh, We're out here yakking <laughs> ham radio. <laughs> Loudest thing on the mountain. But I've never heard someone say, Matt, you see she's pretty good. There she is. Hello, mamas. A young one. Looks healthy. Yeah, step back in the light. There we go. Hello, mamas. There she goes. My other summits have been just uh, sticker bushes and patches of dirt. This has a tree so you can hang lines, shade. Oh, fantastic. Should be a great view up here too. Yep. I haven't been able to see. I bet once we get out of it, take Bear Lake. Cactus. Oh yeah, wow, look at that view. Yeah, baby. This is why you hike. <laughs> There's a ski run over here. <laughs> For uh, that moment. Yeah. Beauty. So you're loving it. I'm loving it. Hey, two week last weekend, poodle dog bush. This weekend. Pure joy. Pure, pure joy. joy. I'm feeling it, man. Oh, man. This is great. Here's my operating position. Uh, I could probably scoot under this tree going up to uh, my small push-up pole that I uh, basically it's two feet at least off the ground so it's up there a ways um, W6 BFT is up over there it's gonna run 20 meter uh, I'll activate on 40 down here and some work some uh, two meter nobody down in camp is may not have the radio on so um, anyway beautiful little spot up here great a lot of places to get some shade set up your rig and great views down onto uh, Big Bear Lake so, uh, yeah, let's get cracking here. I didn't bring my recorder. Um, 
I forgot it. Got my smaller pack for bicycling, so. And as you saw, I probably walked most of the way once we hit the trail, because it's just too big of rocks for me to ride, uh, stop. So, but, um, yeah, coming down the dirt road was fun. All right, so let's get cracking. around Big Bear are just teeming with soda operators. They're odd animals, typically with wires and radios and other curious things stuck to the head. In fact, here's one now in its natural habitat, hunting for that elusive DX. And I got one. Ah, Seattle, that's your big DX? Yeah, for, for, for a single side bin, sure. Sure, yeah, why not? For sure. And you know it's funny, it's somebody I work CW all the time, so. It was great to hear his voice. I mean, what a luxury to have uh, the sum I've been doing having that cell service. So, with single side bin, you can most uh, what frequency you're on and everything, whereas CW, it's just doing the RBN hole. So right. You can't attach a bunch of information. Right, yeah, it's harder. It allows you to be flexible and... Um, well, you can also chase. I love chasing from up here, so having cell service allows me to chase. So I've invested a little extra so I just so I can do some chasing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm being greedy today because I'm doing multiple summits, but this is a spot I would sit all day. This yeah. Is, I mean, the, the view and the cell, you can really have a lot of fun and you can do chasing. Yeah. Yeah, nice little setup you have here. I love the way you got the... Uh, the radio on the on the, uh, the tripod here yeah and you know I I don't have all my little things but I have a little table that I attach to this and then the velcro everything sticks to the sides you know if I'm gonna use my tuner that just velcros up to the top Ooh, and, um, yeah and you know I, it's a big deal being able to see that screen yeah that, that's what that gives you you know it's kind of a there's probably lesser things to have to lug up and I see guys sitting it with in their laps but this is my luxury this is I'll sit on a rock just to be able to carry this in. There you go. I like it. That's a great ad for the 705. <laughs> Hear that, people? Good, I can get you a 705. You don't have one? Yeah. I think they'll send me one. <laughs> <laughs> you already got one. Yeah, well, uh, the backpack got some accessories. Yeah. Yeah, accessorize this guy. Well, I got 25 QSOs and one uh, Summit to Summit. How'd you do? Uh, I, you heard of this? Um, the FMs, it was great. We had some guys at camp, so I got uh, probably seven FM two meter and three single sideband. Um, but to be fair, I only operated single sideband for 10 minutes because it take, it, I spent a lot of time setting up and you know working at two meter. Right. That's cool. Yep. Did you I, have fun? Yeah, and I, th I think the efficiency is definitely, I don't know, what, what, how long is it from when you arrived at your spot to you, your first CQ call? Well, yeah, I'm with with my antenna set up. I can be up and running in about five minutes. Twenty to twenty for me. Yeah, it, it almost always takes me twenty to to run out the radials and, and everything. Else. Yeah, yeah. With the NFED, any of the NFED antennas, you just get your. If once you get the pole up, you're you're Gucci. Uh, and I just, it's great to have trees and shrubs because I just lash it to that stuff. And with this new pole. I lash it a few feet off the ground, so that gives me, you know, another couple feet in the air. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I was crushing it today on 40. It was a huge pileup. Had a pileup on 17. And you were uh, CW or? CW. Yeah. I was all CW today. I forgot to go to Sideband, but, you know, I got it done. And uh, we'll head down. We're going to head home today, so i got to head back to San Diego in a bit. But, uh, yeah, so far, great times up here. Great times.
Dude. I did a lot better on that than I thought I would. I thought I'd be walking so much of that. I, I only stepped off twice and put my foot down once. You and owned other, it. Other, other, time, other times I literally had to rest just with my hands. Was, I was yeah, like, I took a couple breaks just for that as well. Yeah. But I thought for sure, yeah, I'd, there was only two areas I really had to walk. And for me, that was good. Yeah. So. Ah, that was exciting. I'm so glad we pushed as far as we hit the bike. Yeah, me too. Just got her done on the old mountain bikes, and man, was that fun. We tore it up. We definitely tore it up. Uh, what happened at the bottom of that hill, Chris? I turned right instead of going left. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Hey, I thought I was still on the trail. It's like, oh man, I like this trail. This is really nice now. It's all no rocks. Chris ate the up road. the, he ate up the trail so fast he didn't realize that he was already at the T-junction. Yeah, this guy was leading. Uh, down, he's bonsai. Um, I was really impressed with myself. I didn't think I'd be able to ride that much of it, but I probably rode 80 to 90 percent of that Absolutely. trail down. Absolutely. Uh, so I was pretty stoked. That's a that was a big one for me personally because that was probably the most technical descent I've ever done. So great stuff. I never cra and I didn't crash. That's <laughs> that's even better. No blood on the mountain. That's Sorry guys. Uh, this video does not include any great crashes, uh, unlike some of my past ones. So I got to thank uh, Brian for going. You're welcome. Thanks for showing me the way. Yeah, it was a great time. And uh, that concludes that concludes my uh, SodaFest 2021. Some of the guys are already head bugging out. I think you're going to hit another one, right? Yeah, knocked out Gold Mountain. We'll see what happens. All right, cool. K6EZE, we're wrapping it up today. KN6. <laughs> KN6EZE. That's why I can never call you. You're never going to answer me, right? <laughs> but uh, we're wrapping it up. It's Sunday. Uh, some folks have already bugged out. There's, uh, we went up to Gold Mountain. There's three other people up there that just we passed on the way down. Yep. So uh, I think Brian's going to do another one. But people are pretty much bugging out. I'd say this was probably... A super huge success. This is a very successful event. Everybody had a blast. Uh, lots of Summit to Summit action going on and just uh, we had a show and tell last night with everybody with the radios out here which is great. So just uh, definitely want to do this one again. This is great. Yeah and this is a great location. We had um, five good summits here that people could do. Um, they're still out doing them so it was great. People were just going from Summit to Summit yesterday. Some people were hanging out on one. Yeah. So it's a great location. I think from Washington to SoCal to Colorado, we had people on summits everywhere. So I think the more we do this, you know, annually or even maybe even more frequently, we can uh, get some get some more participation, more summits to summit and have a lot more fun. Yeah. And I've never been. Um, well, I mean, this is the biggest event I've been at for soda. I'm sure I've been to a couple small, you know, ham fest. But this was cool because everybody here was all about portable radio showing off the gear that they made or bought on how they do soda so this was a great event i think the next time you hear about one of these if you're not doing soda and you're in socal come on out here and learn from the experts we had some some guys out here that were you know they've been doing this for years they have all kinds of different equipment all kinds of options there's no one way to do soda so that's what i learned when we were out here is everybody's got sort of a different flavor but the great thing about us coming together is we all learn from each other yeah 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 that was fun and you know tell stories and you know or huge lies in my part <laughs> 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 but uh yeah this was this was a lot of fun uh thanks for mike for for kind of coordinating this you really got it going adam and i tried something a few years ago that we all th we had three people here well yeah, absolutely um, i mean the people who showed up adam who booked the site i mean this is kind of like a team effort it all just came it together. was a team effort but it really kind of came together we have the socal soda mailing list but the Zoom sessions just got a lot more traction. We even had Charlie out here from Arizona who joined us. So that combined with you know our mailing list and stuff, we got a lot more traction out of this and people wanting to participate. So Yeah, we definitely got a lot of people saying they want to do it again. So. Yeah, I, I didn't hear anybody that said they didn't want to do it again. <laughs> Maybe in a little bit cooler weather for me. That yeah. was a... 
That was a heat fest going up uh, Bertha for me, but uh, maybe in October we'll see. October is a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, cool. Thanks, Mike, yeah. and we'll uh, we'll close out the SoCal Soda Fest. Thanks for joining. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to know more about doing summits on the air, um, go to hamninja.com slash soda360, the URL right down there. Um, it's a four part series on how to do summits on the air. There's a lot of other channels out there that do as well. Hamninja.com, I've got uh, my full loadout information on there, all the gear that I would carry. Um, some I carry, some I don't. Uh, this, this adventure was a little bit slimmed down. For sure, I didn't have any redundant gear at all. Um, so I was traveling really light. Got my new lightweight pole, which I'm super stoked about. So this was a just an awesome little run today. So thanks for watching. 73, let's roll the credits.